Fire Resistant Podcast. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Fire Resistant Podcast. And Alan, I seen that. So we watched Predators, which is number three. Number three. Right, so you got Predator, Predator 2, Predators, and The Predator, which this is a very confusing naming structure. Yeah. Um, What do you think? What did you feel? How did you feel? That's the word I'm looking for. uh, Of Predators. I've only seen this movie twice, okay? Okay. I saw it in the theater. Yeah. Yeah. And then when I rewatched it for this podcast, I did not like the movie at all. Maxwell says uh, Predator 1 and 2 are the best Predator. I would disagree, Maxwell. Predator 1 I think and 2 pre- are lesser I think to me. Predator, I think Predators is better than Predator 2, but not better than Predator 1. It's close, right? For me, at least. I think it's definitely, it definitely hands down mm-hmm. better than Predator 2. Predator 2 is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Predator 1... <laughs> is only worse in my opinion because of how old it is like the technology they had the right. you know the cameras they had all the technical aspects of predator one is the only thing that makes it worse than predators if they came out the story the story is way better predator one uh right but predators does a better job with on the technical level and so that's what gives it the edge for me on a, well, in, well, an well, enjoyment predator predators is a is a beautifully shot movie yes uh because you know when you're looking at 1980 something versus now 2010 the camera, yeah 2010 the cameras are much better they switched yeah. over i think digital by then yeah so that's the digital. Camera, yeah the camera's able to eat up all of the scenery at that point so you can um you can enjoy the greenness of the um of the trees and and all that what's up brians but, but now now that now that you've seen it before we actually get into the actual story but did you see how my description of the movie was kind of fair where i said that it was um it was basically the gray with predators where yeah. it's like one instance after another one one guy dies the group moves on one guy dies the group moves on one guy dies the, the uh, group moves on maybe i haven't seen What's the a gray for a long enough time but uh in my head there's only liam neeson in the gray is that like the last half of the movie well liam neeson when they crash right there's huh. like five of them okay and one by one bad circumstance happens and one of them dies and the wolves get them and okay. then they move on something happens yeah, gotcha. just pick them off. Yeah, in my head, only Liam Neeson is in that movie. <laughs> like I, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying so hard to like open that memory up, and he's the only thing I can remember. Don't, don't. <laughs> it's a terrible movie. Let's see. Maxwell says Predator Two is good because like Assassins. Oh wait, sorry. Predator Two is good because it opens the door to doing Predator like Assassins Creed and setting it in any time. They only have done that in comics. My favorite Predator anything is a comic that takes place in the 1600s with pirates. And obviously, Predator versus Batman. Yeah, that's yeah. what makes it not good for me. Like, the ending to <laughs> me was so cringy when he gives him the gun to show that he killed someone in the 1700s or whatever it was. I was like, oh, this is yeah. weird. And I kind of expected them to do that in the next movie. Not not in Predators, but like, if I just saw that, I'd be like, oh, the next yeah. movie is going to be in the past, you know? And, right. I, that would and maybe that was their plan. Maybe that was their plan. But I think the, so. The Predator Two bombed so hard. But Maxwell, have you seen the film movie called Batman Dead End? If you have not, go check it out. It is a Batman versus Predator fan film. The fact that and they I have, have yeah, yeah, we watched it on the hundred hour stream. The fact that they have yeah. fifteen minutes of Liam Neeson fighting a wolf on the cutting room floor <laughs> is a tragedy. I know. Yeah, I well, know. They have that ending, the after credits, where you see them both laying down, breathing still. So it's yeah. like, who won? Who's the who's the actual champion? Because you can't beat Liam Neeson unless you're a fence. Uh, well, no, Liam Neeson won the fight because earlier on in the film, I know you don't remember, I do. There's some sort of scene where the camera does the exact same pan shot. Yeah, and, it, and Liam Neeson in the situation he's in is alive. 
Okay. So the camera does the exact same shot, but just a different perspective. So you know that he survived that fight. Yeah, yeah that movie, I was but, so uh, bored in the gray, similar to Predator okay. 1 and 2. But Predators actually held my attention pretty well, I feel. So this this movie, in, and we'll talk about the ending when we get there, this movie, I don't even remember the ending to the movie, right? So when I was getting towards the end, I was like, how does this movie end? I don't even remember. And I was like, and when, when the movie ended, I was like, okay, that's why I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I don't remember it at all. So Maxwell says but that anyway. the director straight up said it wasn't important to the plot of the film. He straps broken bottles to his wrist. The movie was advertised as Neeson versus Wolves. What? Yeah. They uh they completely sold that as something different. Like, do you even? I guess you yeah. see the wolves a couple times, but like, you don't see them being that aggressive. But uh, so the movie, so Predators opens Predators. up with with uh, Adrian Brody falling, falling out of sky, out of the sky, or into the sky, right. falling through the sky. How do you say that? Yeah, falling through the sky. Yeah, and, and uh, he's trying, he's trying to pop his parachute. Which, how do you know what to do in that situation? Because he's beaten on his chest, right? And that one, that the big button on his chest. Yeah. But I would, I would think that's the clasp. If I was, if I woke up and I was him, that harness, that's where it looks like the harness is. And he's punching that, trying to get his thing to open up. I would be afraid that I'm going to pop all the joints and, you know, just lose my parachute. I don't know anything about parachutes, so I'll... I'll concede to your. <laughs> well, generally, it's like it's a rip cord on your shoulder, right? And you, right. you like a five point harness would buckle in the middle of your chest. But anyways, it doesn't matter. So he's falling. Yeah, he... Good. He's falling, and he finally gets his parachute to open the last second. But he still smashes into the ground so hard. And uh, if this happened, you would have so many bones that were broken. Like there's True. just no getting around it, but he smashes it in the ground and wakes up, and he starts seeing other people start landing, and they all, they all end up meeting together, and they, every time they meet, they are aggressive, but they overcome that very quickly. Like I felt like they have to move that forward, they have to move that block forward, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but. Because they're all of different ethnicities. They're all of different backgrounds. They're all like four of them are of different militaries. There's you got a Yakuza guy. You got a guy from the cartel. You got uh, a dude from prison. A dude from prison. Oh, Walton Goggins. That guy. I love Walton. He's he's great. But is he ever not a racist? Like it. it, it, Yes. (laughs) It cut to him. And I was like, oh, surprise, surprise. Walton Goggins is trying to kill a black guy again. Like that's just. I want to say that was kind of right in the middle of either his justified run or his shield run. So I mean, he fit right into the. Yeah. Well, he was he racist in the shield. Yes, he was very racist in the shield. Okay, but he wasn't where he he wasn't knocks out of southern racist. (laughs) He he was like a, a deep southerner. Uh, I don't know if he was a deep Southerner, but he was definitely racist. Okay, yeah. Um, Shane, but, his name was Shane, and yes, he, yes. yeah. Because in Justified, he was he was really racist. Oh yeah, yeah. I can't even say what he said in that. <laughs> <laughs> that is a TOS violation. Peak poor typecasting. Yeah. Well, it's because he's got that uh, his hairline and his accent. The hair, the the teeth. Yeah. He's he's perfect. He, yeah, he's exactly the only time that picture. He, the only time that he wasn't racist. <laughs> did you watch Sons of Anar- Anarchy? Yes. When he played Venus Van Dam. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. the uh, <laughs> he was a the uh, trans the lady boy the trans person. <laughs> huh? He was a lady boy. At least that's what yeah, we call him here. Yeah. Um. But anyways, so they get over this. Hey, I don't know where we're at, and everyone. And one of the one of the scenes that always that that made me laugh really hard, like almost to the point where I fell out of my chair, was when I want to say Agent Brody had met each other, had met right. I think this, they found the sniper lady and uh, and Danny Trejo. So there was three people, and the dude with the chain gun, yeah, just starts blasting <laughs> all over the place and doesn't hit anybody. Yeah. Nobody gets shot in that scene. 
there should have been they should have they should have hired me i would have stood up and being like oh hey what's up everybody i'm pissed and then and he just starts blasting everybody. Yeah. I'm the one that gets like shot in the head and everyone <laughs> else gets away without being shot. Well, you had the guy who crashed into the ground and exploded, right? His parachute never yeah. opened. But yeah. yeah, no, I agree. Someone should have gotten mowed down by the minigun, but I think they didn't want to do that because they, he kind of takes a hero turn. He does. Uh, and so they didn't want to waste that. And so it was like, cause if he, if he blows someone away, cause he's panicking, then that hero turn doesn't is not nearly as effective. Which I don't know, but they all had their hero turn. Even Walton Goggins had his moment. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> Which I thought I don't know though, but like, I just, <laughs> I've I, never I didn't like that. I've never heard that group of words ever in my life. I don't know if you know what, what I'm talking about. What Walton Goggins yells at the alien when he jumps on his back and starts stabbing him. I'm not gonna lie, I don't remember. He says, uh Oh, what does he say? Die space, and then the F word, and it just oh, it for, made me crack uh, up because it was just like so like just so new of an idea. Right. You know what I mean? Like what a weird thing to yell when you're stabbing someone. And, and the, the 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 best part about that scene is he's just shanking this predator, yeah. this highly evolved killing <laughs> machine, is being shanked not to death, but just shanked with the little. <laughs> With a prison shank, not even like a, yeah. a knife, but like an actual prison shank. Um, that was a, he was like, wait a minute, why does everybody have guns and I got this little knife? But oh man, so they're all getting together and they find uh, Toe for Grace. I want to say yes. Toby McGuire first. Toe for Grace hanging upside down from a tree, and yeah. uh, they pull him down. And um, Adrian Brody, which uh, this is the worst casting in this movie. You change this oh, casting. Yeah. And this movie is ten times better because he's this I that from the very beginning. This big tough guy. Well, yeah. he is supposed to be this big tough guy. He's smaller than everyone else. He's almost the same size as the woman, which right. It's nothing against him, but they treat him like he's this huge Arnold Schwarzenegger imposing figure, you know. And it's just it doesn't play on screen that way. Um, but he's breaking everyone down, and he's like, "We have the Yakuza, oh, which." By the way, the Yakuza guy, when he came in, I was like, is this lost? Like, what is going <laughs> on? Because he, like, steps in the frame. He's just in a jacket. Everyone else is, like, walking through, and he takes his shoes off and to protect his shoes. And I was like, what on earth is happening? And it took me a long time until Adrian Brody breaks it down, who everyone is, before I realized right. he was supposed to be there. <laughs> like, it just felt well, so out of place. Well, one of the things that, that actually like took me for a loop was the fact that um i i i I will never ever be able to pronounce his name but uh, the guy that just won the academy award for um best supporting actor his last name is ali he's Mm -hmm. got like this crazy first name he was in this movie who is it who which Uh, character was he he was the the black guy that uh walton was trying to kill oh yeah yeah yeah. i don't know his name he won, well, his first, he's got a crazy first name. Yeah, but he won. He won for Moonlight, I think, last year, okay. and then won for the Green Book. I can't remember. Yeah. Either way, I saw him. I was like, "Holy crap!" Because uh, he was the main character of, or yeah, he was the main character of the um, True Detective season three. Okay. Um. Yeah, the cast is actually really strong, other than yeah. Adrian Brody and Lawrence Fishburne. I was kind of not a fan when he popped in. I don't know if he's, I don't know if he's too big of an actor to play that role. You know what I mean? Like I see him and I see Morpheus. And so that kind of tripped me up and he was, he felt like you could see Lawrence Fishburne playing the character. You couldn't really see the character in my opinion. All right, here we go. I'm going to try it. Marshala Ali. Marsh, Mar, Ma, Er, Shala Ali. That sounds there you go. that sounds close to me. <laughs> uh, I won't True. try. I'm terrible. Yeah. I got a horrible mumble mouth when it comes to names like that. I just right. butcher everything. Uh, he's a fantastic actor, and when you get around to season three of um, True Detective, you're gonna. It's such a great season, but yeah, but yeah they find Topher Grace hanging upside down, and they, yeah, so they cut him down or he shoot him down. <laughs> he shoots the branch and he falls down, 
And everyone's like, well, why'd you do that? And he was like, I don't know, because something. I don't remember what he said, but it was like not not a good enough justification to shoot at somebody. Um, right. But so he's breaking them down. He's like, we were all chosen to be here. We were selected to be here. You got the cartel. You got the Yakuza. You got... Uh, is, go ahead. That's the part of the movie I figured you would hate because it seems like... Oh, I'm getting you hate. I hate this part. Oh, okay. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, so he's naming everything and he gets to the doctor and he's like, except for him. He was a mistake. And I leaned on my wife. I was like, that's Dr. Kavorian or Kavorkian. That guy's clearly been murdering people as a doctor. Like, there's no reason for the predator to not realize who he's getting. Like, for him to select all these people, he's selecting them by uh, their heart they were all, they, type of thing. They were all predators. That, yeah. that was the point of the movie, is they were all predators. Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, he clearly is not nice. He's going to take a turn at the end. And I was like already annoyed from that point on. Right. I was like, oh, this, that overhanded line of he wasn't, so, he was a mistake. And it's like, no, <laughs> no, that's not how movies work, movie. Like, yeah. you tell me he's a mistake. I know that he's not. Like, there's, you wrote this movie. You decided the predator didn't make a mistake. The writer didn't make a mistake. I know what's coming. And so I was already annoyed at that point. Yeah, I was uh, I was annoyed with all of the the plot information that they just threw out there. Like it was just oh, okay, we got all this figured out from from just talking amongst the same six people. It's like oh, this this planet is a uh, how do you say it? This planet is an arena, and yeah. they're hunting. It. Like how did you figure that out? That's a big leap. Planets are large. Yeah. Like it's not right. like they if they ran up on walls or something like a fenced in area, then it would be like. You could start adding that together, but to assume an entire planet is only for hunting, that's crazy. Yeah. And I think he made that assumption after or before the dog attack. Yeah, something. It was all he Adrian Brody knew everything the audience knew. Even yeah. well, he actually knew everything the audience knows before the audience knows it. He's the one who right. gives it to you. And there's just no reason for him to be so smart. And it's all because he's a mercenary and it's can so, I can I take a guess on the other scene that you hated the most? Sure. Was it the scene where the lady was connected to the first Predator movie? <laughs> that was pretty bad. But the next <laughs> scene that I hated the most was when he decided I'm going to go free the other Predator to fly the ship for me. Oh, okay, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> but I was when when she said that because I you know I I had forgotten the movie when she said that I was like Alan's raging literally yeah. at this present moment <laughs> right now. No, I was yeah. I thought she was going to be the woman from Predator One's daughter. Like that's what I was. Oh, expecting. that would have made it even worse. Yeah. That would have made it even worse. Yeah, but she was just like but, we uh, we call him this. Or I don't even know what she called him, but she had like a specific name right. in their language form. And uh, yeah, no, it was pretty dumb. Let's, let's talk about this dog attack, okay? Yeah. One of the things that again had me laughing. It was not a funny scene at all, but you have these dogs that are coming straight at them, right? You have Adrian Brody, who's this mercenary, is supposed to be super awesome with his gun. Yeah. You have which the lady who's got a sniper rifle. It's not, okay. And, Can we talk about these guns real quick? He's got a twelve yeah. gauge, at like a. Uh, an extended magazine 12 gauge basically right he can probably carry 20 right. rounds in his uh 12 gauge shotgun not super effective right. in a hunting situation unless he's shooting you know slugs yeah. which potentially i guess he close. could what's that it'd have to be up close combat yeah up close and then you have the woman with a sniper rifle who is spotting with a sniper rifle so she's she's looking you know 20 30 yards away through the jungle through a you know probably a 10 20 time scope like right and finding people i was like what on earth is going on neither one of these you're you're fighting mid-range at best you don't need long like having a sniper i can see how that's effective having a shotgun i can see how that's effective using those two as the most effective hunters throughout this made zero sense for the guns that they had it made me mad every right. time i saw them well, the thing that made me laugh is so you have the dogs running at them, right? Yeah. Everybody, the guy with the chain gun is shooting. He's missing. <laughs> Adrian Brody is shooting. He's missing. Danny Trejo with his machine guns is missing. Yeah. Everybody's missing, right? 
and Topher Grace just takes off running like, holy crap, I'm going to die. Yeah. And then the, the lady who just spent like 12 shots missing. Yeah. She like she's like oh he's about to die and you see her they 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 go way too long yeah. on the scene where she's like tracking yeah. the dog and she shoots it like right before it gets him I'm like you just missed like twenty shots but you're gonna get this one <laughs> yeah a sniper in the jungle is not really the most efficient tool for hunting right like it would be really tough to survive but she is the best ever she's like Carlos Hathcock no, no, she missed she well, missed she, a lot of her she, shots that's true she missed a lot of her shots how many bullets did they have with them and where did they keep i don't them? know but well after the dog scene okay so danny trejo he did not make it out of the dog scene no okay he, they found they found him later but the guy the ali guy i don't know his name uh he there would have been no place for him to have more magazines no um if you look at adrian brody's character he's got he's got shotgun shells all over him he's got one he's got like a full a magazine drum. whatever drum on his back yeah. uh as far as the sniper rifle lady i have no idea yeah. um who else had guns uh so danny Trejo, he, he guy he only yeah he had a pistol but he probably only had one yeah. magazine or one clip maybe two right. you know what i mean like because he's just in a suit right um but she had the coolest gun. I forgot about the way because when he fired, it fired at an X. the The fire went like this, like in an X. I don't know if you noticed that. I didn't notice the Yakuza guy. Yeah, when he shot his gun, it was like in an X. It was pretty cool. Huh? Yeah, I missed that. Like, like the the flame, not the X. He, he wasn't shooting like an X, but <laughs> he, he fired at the screen. The flame came out. Oh, in an X. oh gotcha, was, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, who else was there? So there's the chain gun, but he he had a oh, yeah. backpack. Yeah. So potentially, but like, how many rounds he shot in the beginning of his like his introduction scene? It's like right. He he wasted entire uh, what was it chain, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. Because Agent Brody snuck up on him when he was trying to change it out. Yeah. What did uh, Ali the Ali guy? What was his gun? I can't remember. He had he had an AK forty seven. Okay. That's and, what I'm saying like he may have had an one extra magazine, but yeah. I'm. Not much. Well, he was and I, like, he was also part of the death squad in Africa. I, I think it was Africa. Uh, I have no idea. I don't remember. And uh, <clears throat> so they wouldn't be like heavily equipped. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like the just in reality that that soldier, if you pulled him out randomly, he wouldn't be super equipped. He wouldn't. One, they don't have a lot of money. Two. They're going to be running around in cars. So a lot of the stuff they're going to carry is going to be in the car anyways. You know what right. I mean? And so like for him to have a lot of ammo would be unrealistic, which obviously predators in space capturing people, all that stuff doesn't have to be realistic. Um, right. Then you got Walton Goggins with his, his shank <laughs> and uh, Topher Grace with his scalpel. Right. And uh, I think that was which, it. Which when, when you saw... When you saw the Russian guy go to touch that plant and you saw him dip his knife into into this foreign plant that he's never seen before and he's like, Oh yeah, this is gonna make you not be able to move. Yeah. Were you like, Oh well that's gonna come back later on in the movie? I was too annoyed to think about that coming back in the movie at how he would know what an alien plant would do right instantly <laughs> on vi- like right. visual sight. Like he was like Oh yeah, if you touch that, you're going to be paralyzed from the waist down. Don't do it. And it's like, what? This doesn't exist so, in your world. How would you know any of this? So my boy Danny Trejo eats it. We yeah. don't see how he eats it, but he's dead. Yeah, he like falls into a trap running away and uh Does he? Did yeah. I miss that? You don't see it. You see him okay. from the back sitting in a right. trap. And the predator is replaying his voice saying, "Help me, help me, help me." And uh Adrian Brody is instantly like, we got to leave him. We can't do anything to help him. This is all booby trapped. And they throw like a rock into the field and it goes off. And right. uh, the he's like, we're going to leave him. You can stay here if you want, but I'm leaving. He walks off. Everyone else walks off. The woman is like, I have to help him. I have to help him. Then shoots him in the head. And I was like, why did you have to wait so long to shoot him? Because if that's all you're going to do, you could have been like, okay, hang on. I'm 
let me just end his misery and kill him. Like she made it out like she was going to try to rescue him and then right. just shot him after everyone left. And that it felt like a weird structure of events, you know? It was definitely a weird moment just because it's like, come on, man. But just uh, shoot him and let's, shoot him and let's go. Yeah. But he was already dead. He was dead before right. she shot him, which is another thing that movies do. Talking about the uh, hero turns and not wanting to ruin that. They put that clip in so she didn't have to make the choice. This like complicated choice. Even though she did shoot him in the audience yeah. eyes, it meant nothing because he was already dead. And I felt so as, soon as, as soon as she shot him, the the recording still played, so he knew. Yeah, but she knew that uh, there was something weird going on. Yeah, I guess because uh, it, it's hard to tell if they could hear the recording still or not because it was it went into the predator's point of view, and so for me, I thought he was listening to it and like because he was capturing them talking, trying to get new voices. Um, so I I wasn't sure if he was auto if he was projecting that or not. But either way, she shot him. He was already dead, and they move on. And Adrian Brody, his whole his whole character development happens so quick because he's like, "I'm doing this on my own." And then, in like two scenes later, he's like, "I can't do this on my own, guys. We got to work together." And I, I, I go to my wife. I was like, "Okay, well, he's not the hero. He can't be. His his journey is done. He's already accepted right. that he can't do it by himself. His story is is pretty much ending." Like it's the female, the girl is the hero of the story. Like she's going to be the one to figure it all out, which I was kind of right. Um, I think she is the main character, but he's the muscle that completes everything, you know? But yeah, so they continue on Adrian Brody's grumpy because he's so, he's so uh, stoic and tough. He's so angry. He hadn't got another, Oscar nomination since the pianist till he was super <laughs> mad. Well, that was the thing that drove me crazy is he he worked so hard on that gruff voice that he couldn't yeah. express any other emotion. Like he he was committed to doing that that yeah. he couldn't be scared, couldn't be sad, couldn't be afraid. All he could do would be, was like aggravated was his only thing that he could emote and i was just like come on like just use your normal voice it's fine if you you know you don't sound that tough you don't look that tough so use a voice that fits you and just be tough like that's not a problem (laughs) you know you don't have to look like arnold schwarzenegger to overcome adversity like we can follow along and you know you you the movie telling us that you're so big and tough adrian brody is harder to accept than Adrian Brody actually overcoming the predator. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, I understand because um, I, I looked it up while we were sitting here chatting about it. And Adrian Brody, see, I thought the predator movie was a lot closer to the pianist than, mm. than what it was. So the predator came out and was it 2010, 2010. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And the pianist came out in 2002. So okay. he was still trying to overcome the, Skinny. Pianist. Yeah. Uh, well, because he got super yeah, so skinny for that. He did. I mean, it's a, it a great movie. I love The Pianist. But, like, what it boiled down to is, like, for me, when I, every, even when I see him now, mm. there's, he still has not, in, in, my, in my opinion, he still has not found a role to overcome how great he did as The Pianist. As, uh, what was the name of the guy? I forget the character's name. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so it, it was uh, I don't know, it was so that's a that's a crazy Jewish name. I have no idea. How to, uh, <laughs> Every time I see him, I, I have a hard time overcoming the image of him force kissing Halle Berry at the MTV Music oh, Awards. Yeah, that's like a that's like epic. That's an epic moment. Like <laughs> I think Halle Berry is amazingly attractive. So like I would have probably done the same thing if I would have won the award and she was giving it to was, me. Heck yeah, man. He was so non-committal and all that. Like you could see him like nervous because it's sexual assault. So yeah, and it plus it's on TV, and plus <laughs> he didn't know what her reaction was going to be. So he's like, "I'm doing this, but I don't think I should." <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway. This is it. Oh, but uh, he played he played a character uh, in a TV show that I watch uh, called Peaky Blinders. Okay, and he 
he tried to play a tough guy in that in that TV show as well, and it just did not. It still did not work. He still went with the grung, grungy. Hey, uh, I'm a guy from. I'm a guy from. Um, where was he from? He was a uh, mobster from Brooklyn? New York. So he had like the New York accent thing going on, but he was he he, he had the all of his scenes included him with a um, toothpick in his mouth. I don't think there was an, a scene when he and Peaky Blinders with him where he didn't have the toothpick in his mouth because no. I guess if you're a gangster from like the 19 uh, was it 1930s, you have to have a toothpick in your mouth. Yeah, uh, everyone. Maxwell says when he thinks of Adrian Brody, he thinks of him getting blacklisted from SNL for introducing Sean Paul with a Jamaican accent. I don't think I've ever seen or heard about that clip, but it sounds amazing. Really? Yeah. He got blacklisted from SNL. Dang, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know know that either. That's crazy. Wow. I feel like he's really trying to find like his thing. Like he's like, I just want one thing people will know me from, and apparently it's not the pianist. <laughs> It's the it's the pianist, but that's not what he wants. He seems like no, he's he trying really hard, really hard to find a new thing. He has been consistently working since nineteen ninety four, ninety three. Okay, so he he's been in a movie or TV show since nineteen ninety three oh. every year. Wow, but uh, yeah, so he does a terrible job in this one. Um, it's like, yeah. and part of that a lot of that is casting like it's not so much that he did a terrible job it was that he was chosen for the wrong role you right. know like it's just there's no there's no amount of acting i don't think he could have really done other than like i was saying earlier of just like just be more of yourself and we can accept that easier than you trying to force us into thinking you're something you're not you know like he just what they wanted him to do, he was not the person to do it. Right. Do you see another role that he could have played in that movie and just re- and another actor to have replaced him? To like swap them out? Swap two of them? Swap. Well, Is that what you're saying? I don't, know about, I don't know about swapping them out because I don't know. I don't know if there was a male in that movie that could have taken the lead role. No, I really I, don't. Think so. I don't think so. I would. I would have rather seen Adrian Brody as Lawrence Fishburne's character. Ooh, yeah, okay. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like, I feel like I mean, that would have been a better position for him to be in. An interchangeable character that anyone could play. Yeah. But I think he could have been, you know, kind of crazy. Like, I think you would have bought him as crazy a lot easier and yeah. a lot more believable that he would have survived um, the Predator the, a couple times. And because, so we'll jump ahead a little bit here to Lawrence Fishburne, but he... He survived a hunting, and he's been on there for uh, six seasons, I think he said. Right, whatever that is. Whatever, yeah, whatever season that is. is. Um, we can assume years, right? Six years, I think right. it's probably safe to say. And uh, he's been scavenging and being like this rat-type character, trying to find things and living in the sewers, basically. like And talking to himself, going, you know, literally psycho. Um, I feel like Adrian Brody could have really pulled that off. Because one, Lawrence Fishburne, like, I'm fatter than him, but he was pretty fat for surviving off of scraps for six years in the jungle. Do you know what I right. mean? Like, yeah. he, he was not, he was not look like, he did not look like he was struggling to find food at all. But where you could have put Adrian Brody in there and you would have believed like, oh yeah, this guy has, you know, really struggled out here for a long time. I think he can play crazy really well because he is kind of crazy. And you would be more believable, like, oh, yeah, I could see this guy actually getting lucky and fending off a predator. None of those things I felt like Lawrence Fishburne, you know, connected with. Uh, Maxwell says, I would watch Chris Pratt in a predator movie. He's jacked enough now. He'd be an interesting one. I think. Mm, I don't know about Chris Pratt in a predator movie. It would be. Uh, I think he could almost work in Predators in this one because it's kind of a comedy at some points. Uh, I don't know. But his, he might be too big, kind of like the, the same issue I have with Jurassic world is he stands out so much and he wasn't playing the character he normally plays. So it felt like why, why have Chris Pratt if you're not going to use Chris Pratt? And I think that's what they would do with predators. 
you know, uh, even though he's in kind of everything now, I would think that it, I, if they made Predators right now, they would yeah. probably cast The Rock as the main character of that movie. And I think he would be able to do it. Uh, he would, in, in this movie, in this Predators. In, that, in, in Predators, not, not that anything. Yeah. <laughs> I think he would be too charismatic to be grumpy, as grumpy as Adrian Brody needed to be, well, or supposed well, to that's, be. He doesn't, I mean, he wouldn't have to be grumpy. He could just be like, follow me or die. Yeah. You know, you can go this way, I'm going to go this way, and that's just the way it's going to be. Because my first thought, my first, the first one that I went to was Jason Satham. <laughs> that's what I would rather swatch a, I, I, swap out Adrian Brody I, for. No way, man. Jason yeah. Statham, he would... Uh, no way. <laughs> because Adrian Brody's character had to be intellectual. And The Rock, I don't think you would buy it. For him to look at everything, look at the lay of the land, look at all the people and know exactly where everyone is, I don't think you would buy it. I think that scene would stand out so much more if the rock was delivering it, but I think Jason Statham could pull that off and so what, be imposing. What movie, what movie has Jason Statham played an intelligent character in? Uh, the fast and furious movies. No, he's not. Yes, he is. He's like a super spy. What do you mean? Uh, that's a super spy. That doesn't mean he's intelligent. <laughs> All of his movies, he plays the same character. He plays it where he, okay, let me, re- let me rephrase it. He acts the same. So uh. all of his characters always come off as, Oi, I'm right here and I'm going <laughs> right now. You listen to me and I'll do this. <laughs> and it's always the same thing. I told you I went on a Netflix binge where I watched all of his movies. They're so good, though. <laughs> yeah. Crank? No. Imagine Crank versus Predator. Check check Chelios Frank, versus the Predator. Chef Chelios would Chef. be great. That would be a great movie. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Put him in. I didn't say he would smart. <laughs> I didn't say <laughs> no, the but thing I, about Chef Chelios versus the Predators, Chev would just die immediately. No, nah, he would his heart rate would be up too long. He's in he's unstoppable and his heart's moving. Nothing can kill him. He fell <laughs> out of an airplane. He could have been one of the guy that f- <laughs> fell out of the airplane. And his parachute doesn't open. He doesn't die. His eyes open at the end. Yeah, but he died. They 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 resurrect. They what they use the defibrillator to wait, to stop him from dying. Well, that's not dead. He's still alive. <laughs> I don't know how what you consider dead, but dead is final. There's no coming back. If Fine. you if you die uh, and you come back, you weren't actually dead. You were just in hanging out in the waiting room. Fine, you win this one. I'll <laughs> let you have that one. Just because if you would have died, we wouldn't have got Crank 2, which is oh, so almost as good as Crank 1. I, I hope they make a number 3. Uh, I think I, I, if they were going to make a Crank 3, they would have already done it. Yeah, I think he's... That, that ship has passed. He's too big now, I think, to do Crank, really. I think I think a lot of people would go see it and be like, what on earth is this movie? Because they would know him from Fast and the Furious and the Expendables and all the other stuff that he's done. Right. And uh, I think it would be harder to for him to pull off. Um, but anyway, so we, we got Lawrence Fishburne. He's the rat. You got the uh, so Walton Goggins. You, his introduction is he's trying to kill the black guy for no reason. There's no establishing why they. Uh, oh wow, Bereans! It's because they're wow. crazy. Have so, you not seen the Crank movies? Crank set or <laughs> Crank Bereans. <laughs> Uh, says, I don't see the appeal with the crank movies. They are so much fun and just off the, thing the about wall. It, when, he, when someone makes a comment, I don't see the appeal with the crank movies, that just leads me to believe that he hasn't seen it. He said, um, you saw yeah, them, okay. I saw them, yeah. They're so fun. So, neat. so the, the reason why I like the crank movies, Bereans, is because I could literally sit back in my chair, turn my entire brain system off, and yeah. sit back and enjoy the ride i mean just the fact that you watch the first one and then you watch the second one shows that there was some sort of appeal to be like oh okay well let's see what happens in the second one i think he just checkmated you right? as a checkmate yeah i right know i mean the appeal the first one was enough to make you to go see the second one i was so hyped up for the first one and when it lived up to my expectations when they announced the second one i was like i can't believe they're doing a sequel <laughs> holy <laughs> yeah <laughs> it it's and one of those. Lived up to it. I think if you only watch it once, it is not as good either. It's like if you don't know what you're getting into, 
say you only watch the first one, you never watch the second one. If you don't know what you're getting into, it's like kind of abusive. You know, you're like kind of taken back by what happened and everything that went on. But when you are like, you know, okay, this is going to be madness. It's not going to make any sense. And he's just going to be crazy the entire time. You start right. to appreciate it for that. Uh, Brian says, yeah, the appeal was when everyone said I should watch it. I did. And that peer, peer appeal is gone now. Yeah, but they said watch Crank 1. If you didn't like it, then why would you watch Crank 2? That doesn't make any sense to me. But one thing that hurts my heart, I've seen that. Yes. Alan? Yes. Is Crank 1 came out in 2006. Is it that long ago? Yeah, and Crank 2 came out in 2009. Can you believe it's been that? It's been 10 years <laughs> since Crank High Voltage. <laughs> that hurts my heart so much. Yeah. Just because it just seems like it came out yesterday. I know. We're getting old, man. I mean, I'm not so as old, old as you, but still. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, but back to Predators. An equally <laughs> equally crazy but not as fun movie. Um, right. So Walton Goggins. So that's Danny Trejo. Yeah, yeah. So Danny Trejo is dead. They leave him <clears throat> and they continue on. And I don't remember what. I can't remember what the next step was from there. They they're all together. They get on the mountains, and is this one Lawrence Fishburne shows up, or does someone else die? Uh, I want to say I I'm not gonna lie. I don't remember. I think Lawrence Fishburne shows uh, up around this point. I don't remember if someone dies before or after this, but Lawrence Fishburne shows up and is like, "Hey, well, he's whispering," which I thought was really annoying. Like I know it was for storytelling, but. Right, just something about whispering in movies is always a problem because he's like whisper yelling, like if I can hear you, he can hear you. Let's go, you know. And it's just like he takes him back and he starts trying to. Everyone starts loading up because this guy's got all the ammo in the world right. in his little thing. They start, yeah. Prepping. I want to say that, that that's what happened. Uh, well, no, the thing was is they um, is they is they. After Danny Trejo died, what's his name? Agent Brody was like, everybody follow me. Yeah. They find, they track, or somehow they find the Predator's camp, and that's when they run into yeah. the Predator that is tied up there. Yeah. Which, yeah. What do you then, think of that, having two levels of Predator, having the Uber Predator and the Predator that we know? Because if, if, to me, it felt a but, little bit like the Death Star and the star killer base of like now that this is the third movie we got to get even bigger the i don't know um maxwell if you're still in here uh since you seem to know a lot more about the predator lore uh prior to the predators was there high was there a hierarchy with there bigger predators than just normal predators well that's what they say in, I, I really in, don't in this movie because the right. the one who's chained but, up is the original predator style, right? The original face, all that, right. like the Small original one. size, the smaller one. Which, and then you have the bigger ones in this movie. And when he takes off his mask, it looks completely different. It looks much more. Right. Well, I don't know if much more alien makes any sense, but uh, let's see. Maxwell says by two, yeah, they had this kind of thing set up. Um, I don't. I. I guess so. I I know they kind of had like a hierarchy, but I didn't think they had any of the bigger ones in the second one. That is true. There were bigger ones at the end of two when Danny Glover did stand up. That is true. There were, yeah. there were, but um, to the point of, you know, them being at war with each other, two factions, the bigger ones and the smaller ones, I guess we can just assume that that's what happened. Yeah. And so you have the smaller one tied up and then you have the bigger ones that are, bullying killing i was a little confused by what they're doing like i, I was like is he school hazing the smaller bully like is this locking the bull or the the nerd in the the locker is that the equivalent to what they did to him here or are they murdering him i think so i think they i think they tied him up to to bully him because they kill everyone else they take his mask off they take his gun off they basically just make him just be like a guy a normal predator just kind of hanging out waiting to die i guess i don't know yeah that well that's what i was confused by i was like what was their hope or what were they hoping to happen to him by the end of all that i would say the purpose of it would be to drive the story 
for the end of the film. <laughs> that, that makes sense. Uh, Maxwell says, the first one establishes none of this, but the end of two basically sets up that there's some kind of hierarchy, not as extreme as it's gotten. Yeah. Mm. But uh, yeah, so they oh, so they see all that. Oh, that's they find the, the dead soldier at this point, the one who gotten blown up. And Oh, no, this was when Danny Trejo died. Um, mm. all the traps get set off and they're all running from spikes dropping, falling into pits where there's like spikes all over the place. And they're like, oh, oh yeah. that's when they realize that there's been more people. Um, but so then Lawrence Fishburne meets up with them and they're all hanging out in his little base and he's got all these supplies Crap. and Lawrence Fishburne goes crazy and decides to smoke him out he's gonna i guess he's gonna kill him with smoke right he's gonna i have no idea what his plan was uh, yeah because he locked him in and started smoking him up and like i guess with enough smoke you could kill people but it didn't seem quite thought out which i maybe was the point but adrian brody shoots a hole in the ship and uh ends up calling the predators towards them then they're all fighting on the ship trying to survive. And uh, I want to say the Russian guy is the next one to die. He is. He is because he helps out Topher Grace. Topher Grace. Yeah, Topher Grace doesn't make it out in time. And uh, new name, who dis? What's up, Ping? I assume you're Ping Pong. But I don't know. Ping Hajin? Hajin? No, I don't think it's Ping Pong. No? He says new name. So. Oh, well, maybe it is. He is. Oh, he is being. Okay. See, 10 points for me. Um, you can have it. So they turn He They all leave Topher Grace, but it turns out the Russian guy turns around and goes back and is getting shot. Right. He is shot a couple so times, I'm, falls down. And so let me ask you something yes. happened that, that got my attention away from the movie. Why in the world did they, did they leave Topher Grace? He was on the wrong side. How did he get on the wrong side? He was too slow, I think. Oh, okay. Well, and I don't know. The, the doors closed. I, was, I, I can't remember exactly what happened, but something something got in between them because they weren't leaving him intentionally, but they had right. to leave him because if they to save him, it would have taken a lot of time to get, retrieve him. Okay. And uh, so the Russian guy turns around and he's he's fighting with the the predator. And he's getting shot and he's dying and the predator like picks him up and the Russian has a claymore strapped to his chest and blows both of them up. And yeah. So, which I actually, I really like that guy. I thought he was one of the better yeah. characters in the movie. Um, he didn't do a lot. Sure. He didn't have a lot of uh, like heavy lifting in the acting type of stuff. But like every time he was on, like when uh, Topher Grace is talking to Walton Goggins and is just Walt Goggins like I can't wait to get back to um, uh, Earth so I can just start raping people. He's like Thursday yeah. nights raping people, and Topher Grace was just like, okay. And the he goes over to the Russian guy, and the Russian guy's like, stay away from him. He's like, yeah, good idea. <laughs> and it's just like it, the uh, <laughs> predator st- pew pew stab stab bang bang. Brian's have a good night, buddy. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night, Brian. Thanks for hanging out. Um, like Walt Goggins in this is is a terrible terrible person and uh you still kind of love him somehow i don't know if it's just walton goggins charm and uh i think you like him for the the end that he gets just because he's a jerk throughout the entire film and then for the sake of killing his character he's like all right everyone you guys can go and that that also kind of leads me into something that made me dislike well i mean i didn't like the movie to begin with but so when you see the Predator in all three movies, yeah. right? When he uses his blaster, right? The blaster yeah. goes through whatever it shoots, right? Yes. Yeah. We saw that in multiple occasions, even in this movie. But when he shoots Walton Goggins in the shoulder, yeah. it just kind of like maims him. It doesn't go through his shoulder. You know why, off right? his arm. It's because he stole the armor from Lawrence so he, Fishburne. And he had that underneath. Did he really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they they established that in Lawrence Fishburne's area, and he's like, "Hey, don't touch that. That's that special oh. armor or whatever." And so Walton Goggins puts it down, but after he gets shot, his his uh, prison jumpsuit's torn up, 
and you can see the armor underneath. Okay. It's like an insert shot, but it's really quick. It's like it's not surprising to miss it because it was like a two second shot, you know, two second right. clip of it. But see, it's it seems like the whole scene I was kind of not paying attention. Something must have been going on where I just missed all that. Yeah. Yeah, well they don't show him steal it, they don't show him put it on, and then he dies right after they show him wearing it. So it's not right. like it's not a big plot point, but that's why it doesn't blast through him. It's because okay, whatever well, that, that armor was. And then my, then my hate for it goes down. That scene. <laughs> uh, Father Ironheart says his shoulder is made of Wolverine bones, adamantium. Sure. Um, so he, <laughs> so Walton Goggins, or no, Topher Grace gets saved by the Russian guy. Walton Goggins gets blasted by the Predator, and it looks like he's dead. The Predator assumes he's dead, and that's when Walton Goggins jumps on the Predator's back and starts shanking him with his prison shank, and yells out that "die space f word." And uh, uh, so it's, it's just such a weird thing. Like whoever wrote that, I don't know what they're thinking, but it's just crazy. It's just a weird combination of words, <laughs> you know? Uh, right. But then the movie, was, the movie was a weird combination of words. That's true. Uh, I can't remember how Walton Goggins dies. I know it is involved with him shanking him, but does the guy, he just flip him over? Oh, I, I remember it. So the predator, so as he's stabbing the predator, the predator flips him over and he lands on his face, right? Yeah. And then Walton Goggins is like talking trash to him, and the predator reaches down into his back and rips out his okay. his his head, uh, which I don't understand how that would work. But he reaches into his back, rips out his spinal cord and skull. He yeah. rips it all out with one with one pull out. Yeah, yeah, that definitely would not work. Your skull would stay behind. Like if you got a hold of someone's skull and you were the strongest thing ever you one would only take the vertebrae you're touching Two, right. Even if you could take the whole spine, your head detaches way too easy. <laughs> Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so he, he rips out Walton Goggins spine. Then, uh, so they're all running away. Lawrence Fishburne gets blasted away. I'm pretty sure. Or maybe he gets stabbed. I don't remember. He's like, it's I about do, time. All right, go ahead. Yeah, I do remember that he gets blown to pieces by the uh, the gun on the Predator's shoulder. Yeah. And then uh, how did the other black guy die? That's the one that I can't remember. Uh, let's see. When they came across the um, the Predator camp for the first time. Yeah. Uh, when they came across the thing, Adrian Brody was standing there, right? And then they were like, what's going on? I don't understand. And then all of a sudden, they're like, where's Adrian Brody's character at? Yes. And then you see... Uh, the predator's um, pole or spear go through his head and like, I think through his body. I think gotcha. he gets a spear all the way through his body yeah. and he dies right there. Okay. That's why I couldn't remember. I was like, man, what was he doing during all this? But that makes more sense. Um, he was dying. He was dead. That's what he was yeah. doing during all that. Then we get to arguably the worst part of this entire movie. When the Yakuza guy who True. has stolen the samurai sword from Lawrence Fishburne. Wait a minute. No, no, no. This is the best part of the movie. Oh, it is so bad. It doesn't make any sense. Best part. It's like it a doesn't, but it's a five minute samurai fight scene between him and the predator. Yes. I don't that think was a, it was the best part of the entire film. Yakuza is not modern day samurai. Is was one of my biggest issues with this. Like he's a gangster. He's not a samurai. And right. so, like, for him to be so proficient at using a sword when you won, it's not like he's out there practicing all the time, like, actually in combat to the point where he would be able to be good enough to fight off the Predator with a sword. And two, don't know that. well, like, in the reality of the world we live in, that's not something that happens, right? Like, he might practice, he might have the, like, some skill, but that doesn't translate into actual combat experience like the Predator would have. Do you know what I mean? No, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this scene. This is the best oh, part of the film for me. Right. Why don't you explain it then? Because I hated it. Well, well no, it's it, it's not so much that I have to explain it, but like, so the the group is running away, and then, you know, just like in movies that pick off people one at one at a time, the Yakuza guy is like, you know what? We're not going to make it, so I'm going to turn around and let's do this. So he turns around, he takes his... Um, Suit jacket off. His jacket off to reveal he's got like yeah he's got all these tattoos and he pulls out the sword, and then the predator right 
the predator could have easily blasted him to pieces with his gun, right? Yeah. But that's not the way the predator operates. So the predator recognized the fact that, oh, this guy wants to go hand to hand or sword to sword combat. So the predator's like, okay, I'm down because that's what their race does. It yeah. goes for, you know, the maximum kill that they can be like, oh, that's just look what I did. I went hand to hand combat with this dude and I murdered him. And they they have this nice little. The reason why I liked it so much is, do, do you ever watch anime at all? Uh, not really. Sometimes, but so that maybe that's why you don't you didn't like this scene. But this scene played like an anime sword fight where yeah. they they fight. They're in the grass. They're in tall grass. The wind's blowing. The grasses are fighting, and then you know they both make a cut on each other, and then you see the predator fall, and you're like, yeah, and then the guy falls in the grass and they kill each other in the waving grass. I thought, I thought it was, I thought it was good. I thought, I thought it was, I thought, well. I thought it was well shot and well choreographed. I thought it was just so out of place yeah. for this movie because they quiet everything down and they just have a random field out of nowhere. Like it, it becomes a, a samurai short. You know what I mean? Right. Like you change the predator, I it. you change the predator with a human and it's like actually a really well done sword fight. Mm-hmm. It would have shown up in Kill Bill. Yeah, exactly. But uh, in this, it was like already so crazy, and then it just felt so out of place to me. I was like, "Oh, this is this is too much." Uh, Father Ironheart says he is classically trained in sword combat. Some gangsters want to be old school. Don't, don't you dare try to make <laughs> excuses for this movie. It is so bad, Father Ironheart. Don't you dare that is a great that. response, Father Ironheart. I appreciate that. <laughs> because if he wasn't classically trained in the art of sword fighting, when he picked up that sword, why he would have just put it right back down. He would open it up and we'd be like, oh, look, it's that. But no, he carried it because he knew, not that he was going to get into that fight, oh, but he, he... See, here's the thing. You got to think about the people writing the movie. That's, And it's like, man, this feels really racist. Now you have the Yakuza guy also being a professional samurai. Like to the I didn't point, look at Sorry, go ahead. Uh, just to the point where he could defeat the Predator with a sword. It's like, well, he's Asian. So yeah, <laughs> this adds up. People will believe this because he's Asian. Well, for me, I didn't look at it as racist. I looked at it as like really out of all the things that Lawrence Fishburne had in his ship, he actually had a samurai sword. I didn't look at it as far as, oh, this dude's Asian, so they're like, oh, he has to know how to sword fight. I looked at it as really out of all the things in the universe, he has a samurai sword in uh, this ship just laying around. That yeah. that was a part that I had a problem with in the movie. Like if he would have... Sp- I'll say spawned in. If he would have spawned in the in the movie having the sword, then that would have. Well, had they, I, 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 had, like I remembered that. Had, like you're saying, had he either shown up with the sword or even established right. hand-to-hand skill, right? Like if he interacted with a predator and only had a stick or had like a, a metal pole or so, just something to show like, oh, he actually has ability. And then you get to this lawn drawn out sword fight you would at least be like okay you you established this earlier this is something about his character but with this they're just like oh you know it'd be cool let's have a a five minute sword fight between the asian guy and the predator because all asians know how to use samurai swords because we're racist well what do you think about the scene going back to when he what the producer said revealed when he took his shoes off, that 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 took it to a whole different level. Like he just wasn't your average. Well, like I said, I I, was, I thought I was watching Lost. I thought he was the handler for the Predators. Is what mm-hmm. I when that happened, that was what was going through my head. I was like, oh, is he is he like recruit them and like keep an eye on them to help the Predators out? Like is he a, a like a henchman for the Predators? Because he was so out of place when that right. that scene happened. Um, but yeah, no, I know he was weird and like, he didn't speak English the whole time until he did speak English. Um, like he had all these quirks about him and stuff, but like, it still felt not established enough for how much time they dedicated towards it. Like he really, really, he should have lost the sword fight. Right. Like if he tried, I mean, yeah, but he's also killed the, the predator. If he tried to fight him with the sword and like completely got manhandled by the predator, it, it wouldn't have bothered me at all. It was just the fact that he was able to compete 
on an equal playing field as a predator who one uses these tools and weapons all the time in life and death scenarios and for him to i assume i think fair to say casually train in swords to match is just like you know someone who goes to the 24-hour fitness and does like boxing classes fighting john jones do you know what i mean like it's just no there should be no comparison between the two and yet right. he still overcomes and defeats the predator even though he sacrifices himself he still kills a predator that was my issue with it as he should have because <laughs> he's asian <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Because he wield his sword. <laughs> it was an epic scene. And plus, they had to get rid of a predator. So, yeah. so that way it makes it a 1v1 at the very end. Yeah. Well, I mean, they also could have just had two predators and that one survive and then it'd still be 1v1. It or could have been, but they the didn't. Claymore not ever kill anyone and there only ever be one predator and then them reveal that predators is about the humans not the actual predator well <laughs> i enjoyed that scene. that was my favorite scene of the movie and when he dropped you know you know because i told you i only saw the the uh the fight i'm sorry the fight huh the uh, movie when it first came out and then now so when he landed he didn't have the sword i was like how did he get the sword yeah I was like, how does he not have that and because i was looking forward to that scene yeah, where yeah, yeah. against each other and then when uh <laughs> When he picks up the sword inside of the ship, I was like, really, bro? Yeah. Really? So now we have Adrian Brody, the sniper woman, and Topher Grace are the only ones who are still alive. And Correct. Adrian Brody decides, this is to my least favorite part of the movie now. Uh, right. He says, I'm going to go free the small predator and get him to fly us back to Earth. And I was just like what on like what would make you think that that would ever be an option you know because he's like the enemy of my enemy is my friend or whatever and it's just like no these are aliens that like are trying to destroy you like even though right. he's captured and being tortured or whatever doesn't mean he's gonna help you he could easily just you know kill you and run off on his own or just run off and leave you like there's no his confidence in this plan was too high. And so they're, they're like, all right, I guess we don't have any other plan. Let's try it. They go and on the way to find him, Topher Grace steps on a, basically a bear trap. That, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And so his, his ankle gets all jacked up and Adrian Brody tells the sniper girl like, hey, let's leave him. He's going to slow us down. We're not going to be able to make it if we have to take, take him along. And she's like, no, we have to help him. And he's like, you can help him. I'm going. And so he takes off, leaves the girl in Topher Grace and goes and frees the predator. The predator's like, agrees to the plan, gets the ship going. But then the- We think he agrees to the plan. Well, he does. He, he gets the ship going. Adrian Brody runs off to the ship and then the predator fights the bigger predator and ends up dying. Then the bigger predator hits his own button and blows the ship up, which- is another thing that was so clearly going to happen. I was like, oh, that ship is going to blow. Because he, because of Adrian Brody deciding to strand the woman and Topher Grace, I was like, oh, no, there's no way this plan is going to work. It can't. Right. Like, it just is It's going to fail. The ship is going to blow up, and they're going to see it. And I thought Adrian Brody might die because he was selfish, but he comes back and saves them after Topher Grace makes the most predictable turn in this movie and right. it was so like the acting in this i thought was terrible too but he's like uh he he stabs her with his scalpel that has the the stuff from the plant on it that paralyzes her and then he goes on right. this long speech about how he doesn't even want to leave because he's a predator also and how he's always always been killing all these people and all this different stuff and it's just like it, the turn was too aggressive in my opinion like it it was he was too soft too quiet and then all of a sudden he was the predator and it was like i i don't know i partly i didn't like it because i could see it coming and it, partly it felt like it happened too quickly it wasn't earned enough right i was not a fan of that scene yeah i, I thought it was pretty bad what do you think aaron 
But I thought it was, no, I, of course, I thought it was bad, too. I, rem- I remember sitting in the theater being like, what in the world? Because, you know, his his point of turning at that at, at that literal at that literal moment, all three. Well, they didn't know that Adrian Brody was still alive, yeah. but at that point, both of their lives were in complete danger because the predator, both predators, were fighting out outside of the hole that they were in. Yeah, so he knew that the predator was right there. Yeah, so for him to make that turn while they're fighting and she's not paying attention just absolutely made zero sense to me. So I was like, I don't understand why. That, that they wrote that in other than just to be like, hey, it's not just a Predator movie. It's a Predator movie with a twist. Yeah. Well, what the, so. what I if I was writing it or what I think would have been better is you could have still revealed that he was a murderer, you know, and then have her regret saving him because he's disgusting. But don't have him get aggressive against her. Like, don't have him try to kill her because he would want to survive. You know, he right. would want the best chance to survive. And then so like that could have been the the turn of like, oh, no, he is a, an actual monster, not just like so she's a soldier, right? She's killed people. She's a predator. But in war, Adrian Brody's a mercenary who's also killing people. But in war, he's he's like the only one who's an actual, you know, legit monster. And so for her to be like, why did I even help you? You know, type of thing that would have been a much stronger turn than him being like. I'm going to kill you now and you're going to suffer and I'm going to enjoy watching you suffer type of thing. It was just like, it was too much, too, too much of a turn for me. You know, well, I, th- I think if, if I would have wrote it and I know hindsight's 2020 way, right. right? Uh, if I would have, if I would have wrote the scene, I would have had them like maybe run up on the bigger predator decapitating, uh, the smaller predator yeah. and like Topher Grace, because you know, his whole mindset was I'm one of you. Yeah, yeah. Like, like he pushes her in the hole, right? Yeah. He shows the predator pushes her into the hole and like, Hey, I'm one of you. And the predator just comes over there and just like murders the crap out of him. I mean, that would have been so much better because in his mind, I, t- I mean, like, I just don't know. I just don't like the, the whole scene at all. Yeah. Uh, no, they, was- they could have they killed him. And, and it, you know, when, Adrian Brody said he was a mistake. You know, if they would have killed him uh, in this in the hall in the hallway with uh, the Russian guy because they made a connection, that probably would have been a better death too. Like they became friends and they died together, helping each other. That would have yeah. been much better than what we got. Yeah, yeah. Or even him killing someone as they were dying. You know, say like going back to the Russian guy. The Russian guy gets blasted for saving him, and then Topher Grace. It like runs up like he's gonna help him, but then like tortures him for his own enjoyment. You know what I'm saying? Like where the guy's already weak and he's like, "Oh, I no, I'm not gonna save you." You know, like I'm, I want to help them or some something. You know, there's, I, I just feel like there's something more if they wanted to do it that they needed to do that they just right. didn't do. Uh, but Adrian Brody doesn't die. He never got on the plane or the spaceship. Comes back pulls them both out of the pit. She's paralyzed, can't even talk. And then he's sitting there talking to her and Topher Grace tries to stab him. But Adrian Brody turns around because he's super quick, man, and takes his scalpel and stabs him right in the throat. Because he's the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, then he takes off his shirt, gets all his muscles all muddy, and uh, yeah. fights off the Arnold. big predator. Because I'm fast. That's why I did it. <laughs> Is there, was there anything yeah. notable about this last fight scene to you? Because it, it felt kind of, I don't know, everything else was more enjoyable. This just felt like they had to do it, and it but it didn't feel right. anything special. You know, I, 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 to me, I really don't remember how the fight went down. Yeah. Like, I don't, I, I don't remember how, I don't remember how Adrian Brody, Brody defeated the, the Predator. I remember him chopping his head off. Like he did the other one, yeah. But I just don't remember how they he, defeated him. Yeah. So he ends up setting everything on fire, so the predator can't see. So it's like the reverse of what Arnold did. Okay. Arnold yeah, yeah, made yeah. himself cold. Adrian Brody made everything else hot, so he blended in, and then he ends up. And he had mud on him. What's that? And he put mud on him. And he put mud on himself, but he finds yeah. the um like the staff of the smaller predator, and beats his head. Until he's just, you know, bleeding all over the place. And then he slices his head off with the staff or the 
axe. It's probably more of an axe than anything else. And, and, and you know what? Also, how in the world did the Predator survive the multiple grenade explosion? Yeah, I don't know. If you remember when he when he was like, I'm fast, and then he stabs Topher Grace in like the head. Yeah. And Topher Grace is like, Don't kill me, don't kill me. I will kill you. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. he puts all the grenades. He puts all those on. grenades on him. Yeah. So and that when the predator picks him up, he blows up, but it does the predator didn't seem to take any damage from being real close to grenade explosions. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. He just like got blown away from it. But the thing about yeah. a grenade is it's like getting shot, right? Like it's all the shrapnel. Like, I mean, right. obviously if you're close enough, the, the concussion will kill you. Like that will, that will destroy you. Just the explosion explosion in itself, the shockwave. But right. the real danger for a grenade is the shrapnel. You're basically throwing, you know, a hundred bullets at people that right. explode in different directions. And so that's what would have really hurt him. But he just gets blown away because movies don't care about how grenades work at all. Grenade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, no, I thought the line when Tover Grace is like, but I'm one of you was so stupid. That yeah. shouldn't have like I don't know. It was, it was a dumb motivation on that character's part. Um but it ends and you see all the dogs are being dropped down on new in new cages and Adrian Brody's right. like, Let's get out of this, let's get off this earth, and then they just walk off into the sunset. And that was the end yeah. of the movie. I was like, okay. I was so I was so mad when he was when the movie ended like that because I, for real, I could not remember how the movie ended. Yeah, and then he it was, doesn't. Well, That's go. the problem, right? And and you, know, what's funny is I in the era of movies that we are in now, I went ahead and like maybe small small chance. Yeah. That there's an after credit scene. I just went all the way to the end of the movie <laughs> just to see if there was like him on Earth where he was like, "Yes, I made it back." <laughs> You know, but there's not right no there's not no no there's not there's there's not but i'm just it was such a weird way to end the movie because yeah. there was no real um conclusion to their story see father and her said and it, that, that ending was so dumb i'm a sucker for these movies in this universe but that ending was dumb yeah it was terrible it was dumb and, and i think the ending of course just like with predator 2 they probably ended the movie expecting this movie to make a ton of money. Like, okay, we'll finish their story in the next movie where they get off the planet. Yeah. Leave it. They, they wanted to leave it ambiguous um, enough that they could, um, that they could continue it or tie those characters into another series or into another movie. Yeah, because I haven't finished the I haven't finished the Predator, right? Yeah, I haven't finished that movie yet. But I would just assume that er, that that everyone got their their ending. So the movie ended in a way where you could um, walk away and be like, okay, yeah, 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 I understand all that. Yeah, I don't know. I know. And unfortunately, I've heard that movie. this one is really bad. It is. I mean, it, I turned it off right in the middle of it. Yeah. So like you, there, you weren't watching scene. it for the podcast. You were just watching it for enjoyment and you turned it off. I was really bored and I was like, you know what? I haven't seen it. I heard it's terrible. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to watch. Uh, I'm going to watch The Predator and a uh, small spoiler. Okay. Because then you're going to watch the movie. There's one point that everybody who's pertinent to the movie is in a hotel room. Yeah. Right, it's a bunch. Of, it's a bunch of guys that are. That's basically trying to figure out what the predator is going to do next. And Olivia Munn, who is you know the female lead in the movie, she, I think she wakes up and then they start joking with her whether she does one action or another when she's doing something for a guy, yeah. and they're laughing and joking about that. I'm like, what in the world? Yeah, I was like, there's a predator out there like murdering people, but they're going to be like, oh, let's have this scene where everybody. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. This is what made me turn it off. Not the content of the joke, but like everybody in the hotel room is like, <laughs> and Olivia Munn's like, I'm out of here. Huh. And I was like, <laughs> I was losing my mind. I was like, what is going on? I have no idea. That's crazy. At what, all. What, what do you rate predators from negative five to five? Zero being, it's just nothing, right? Like you watched it. You weren't mad that you watched it, but you weren't happy you watched it. Five being this is the greatest, okay, I, negative five being the worst. I think I gave Predator two. I think it was a negative two. I think so. so I would I give this one like a, neg I think a negative one. Yeah. 
I think that's where I'm at too. I think a negative one. Like it was, it's, <clears throat> so on a, on a predator scale, this has been my favorite one, right? This has been the best one. I've had the most fun watching this one. Like it looked the best and it was kind yeah. of crazy in the right ways for me at certain points to where it worked. But on a scale of movies in general, this is like a negative one. Like it, the writing was terrible. The motivations were terrible. It's, it's fine enough to watch, but it's not anything good. It definitely, well, I think you, it puts you in a negative for watching it, right? Like it takes more than it gives you when you watch it. I, I do have a question for you because I said that it bombed. Okay. So, you know, granted the, um, the marketing budget, isn't the same that it is right now yeah. for big budget films. So if I told you this movie costs 40 million to make, yeah. How much do you think it made total worldwide box office? Total 2010, probably like yeah. 80 million. Yeah. Okay. And even at $80 million, would you think that's successful? Cause you doubled your money. I mean, I would if I made forty million dollars. I would think that was really successful. Right. Um, okay. okay, so, so for, let me take the veil off. Let me take the veil off. The movie made a uh, hundred and twenty-seven million dollars worldwide. Okay, on a production on a production budget of forty million dollars. Yeah. So, so I think, to me, that's like a winner. Well, I think the issue is uh, when it comes to bombing is if people have the motivation to see the next one, right? And so. Right. You, you've had that many people see it, but if the whole, if everyone's like, this is bad, why did they even make this? Then even though they made their money back, even though they didn't lose anything on it, still like, oh, no one's going to see the next one. If we do another one, let's, we should not risk it. Let's get out while we're ahead type of thing. I'm going to the dreaded website that we, that we disavowed earlier. I'm going to see what, what <laughs> score that I got. It's got to be. It's got to be around the forties, I think. Predator one is so good. See, Let's see. Uh, Maxwell Predator, says Predator was sixty-five percent. Sixty-five. Yeah, that's madness. Let's see, Maxwell says Predator one is so good because it reinforces that John Carmack, Carmack, I think, said the guy who made Doom. Oh, don't yeah. don't let plot get in the way of action in an action-driven narrative. Yeah. It's true. The problem so is movie, the, the action is kind of boring, at least in today's context. I'm sure it was at the time when it came out, it, it was like, this is awesome. But now it's like really slow and drawn out. And like the pacing is like pretty rough in the context of watching it today. So this, this movie has a 65% score on the tomato meter yeah. for critics. Oh, it has okay. a fifty-one. It has a fifty-one percent on the audience score, so the the critics liked it a lot more than the audience did. But so, I think it, the, in some cases, in, in some cases, this website that I go to, the the dash numbers dot com, yeah, it has the 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 home market performance. So between the DVD and Blu Ray sales, mm. it made another thirty-four million dollars. So, oof, that you know, doesn't seem very good. The, like, if they made, uh. They if they profited a hundred or eighty whatever it was eighty million dollars ninety million dollars, but then they only sold thirty right. million when a movie costs four times the price of a ticket. To me, that seems bad. I don't know. I don't know what the ratio normally is like for something that is right. good, but that seems like oh. So if they made thirty million on ninety million or one hundred twenty, we'll just say the whole thing, right? They made. They sold one hundred twenty dollars in tickets. They made thirty million, so that's an eighth of the people who saw it that want to buy a ticket. Yeah, is that right? Well, I mean, I it kind of makes sense because fifty percent of the 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 audience liked the movie, so that kind of rails up. But ultimately, the reason why I, I gave that stat was the fact that they almost made their budget back just in DVD, DVD and Blu-ray sales. Sell. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I so I would think. I mean, it was profitable was enough that- to try Alien versus Predators and, you know, the Predator. But I, I think it's just a beloved well, Alien- franchise. Right. Alien versus Predator. So, uh, let's see. Predators came out in 2010. Alien versus Predator came out in 2004. Uh, Alien versus Predator Requiem AVP 2 came out in 2007. 
Oh, okay. It came out before. And Alien vs. Predator Requiem was a massive, massive, massive failure on all counts. So they took a look at this movie and like, you know what? Let's just make Predators. <laughs> uh, thank you for the follow, PJ. I don't... Can you say that? Can you read that? Is Can it I read what? James James plays JP. Is that what it oh, is? Oh, James plays. Yeah, whatever JP is. Probably just James plays again, right? Hey, thanks for the follow, buddy. Appreciate yeah. it. Um, so, the if I remember correctly, Alien vs. Predator, the first one, made a decent amount of money for them to hurry up and and punch that sequel in. And then the sequel was, uh, you know, to this day, I still have not seen the sequel to Aliens vs. Predator. Uh, Alien vs. Predator 2 was a disappointment. I really wanted it to be good, says Father Ironheart. Yeah, I can't imagine it being any good. Okay, so <laughs> Sorry. Alien vs. Predator 2. Sure, go ahead. Uh, James was upset that I noticed his name was backwards. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, Alien vs. Predator Sorry, was was made for seventy million dollars and it made one hundred and seventy two worldwide box office. So that's better than Predators, yeah. I think people were just but excited about the craziness. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I saw that movie opening weekend and I never saw the movie again. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I didn't see Alien Predator too. James, the reason why I could tell was because I thought it was a troll name, so I was trying to break it down. To be like, oh, what are you trying to get me to say? And then I, I saw James, and then I realized it was plays. But uh, you can't fool. I seen that. Yeah, I'm too quick, man. Everyone knows. Everyone in chat will tell you that I'm the smartest person they've ever met. I don't know about that. <laughs> You're not in chat. Um. <laughs> but yeah, so negative ones. I think we both. And uh, we will be back next week with The Predator leading up to our triple podcast with Taylor of Alien vs. Predator. Uh, I think we got to decide if we're going to do both at once or if we're going to try to do two separate podcasts, how that's all going to look. But uh, yeah, that's kind of... I, I think because Alien vs. Predator and Requiem are such terrible movies once... Do it once. Do no. Both of them. Sorry, I didn't hear you. I was reading chat at the same time. I got a little spacey. Oh. Do both together as one podcast. It's one one podcast. Let's talk about both movies. Yeah, I think that's I because think that's how I, I want to go I, too. Because I'm gonna mix them up uh, and get them all confused. Yeah, it's exactly what I was about yeah. to say. As I feel like if we tell him or you, and then what I'll do is I'll just sit here all quiet and let you guys just run circles around each other be like wait did that happen in this movie or was that predator That's one good. wait was that predator three i don't know you know you did that a couple times for this movie yeah you're like oh one of the things i hated the most was when one goggins got shot and hey, there's no reason for him to survive and i was like oh no there actually was you just missed it was are you well, that was me just missing a scene. That's uh, but that's what we do different. when we're like, oh, what happened? No, and no, then we you, just both miss the scene, yeah. and then we get stuck in a loop. No, guys, you guys, when you were watching the X Men movies, you were trying to figure out what happened oh. in which X Men movie. This but, was me missing a scene. So to be fair, to be fair for that, that was because we did. So we like we did X Men one, and then we were going to do X Men two, and we had to take three weeks off, and it burned our. At all the podcasts that we had stored up for the Patreon, because that comes out two weeks in advance. Right. And so we're like, let's do two and three together. So we watched two, took three weeks off, then watched three. Mm -hmm. So within five weeks, we watched one, two, and three, and we're trying to talk about them and keep them straight, which is not easy not to do. I haven't seen these movies in years, but I knew what, what happened in each movie. Also, also older than to, to that point, you were responding to what we were saying. We were bringing up the memories to your head as we were talking about it. So you were seeing it as a hindsight thing of like, oh, no, that's wrong. You Test me you, right now. Test me right now. Ask me what happened what. in what movie. I don't care. Just say what ha Think of a scene from an X-Men movie and then say, ask me what movie it came out in. And I'll be like, oh, well, that's easy. Well, I'm still, I'm still priming your thoughts on it. No, I can remember the movies. Like, what, what's, what happened when uh, Eric... Uh, 
did this. And I'm like, oh, well, that happened. In you X-Men couldn't too. even do it now. You couldn't even we pull something. You said, what happened when Eric uh, did uh, this? <laughs> well, this you couldn't you, even you pull me, something specific. Do you, do you want me to say, okay, when he used the metal to get out of the the plastic prison that they had him in, when you guys were sitting there, if you go back and listen to you, you guys talk about that plastic prison scene, uh-huh. it'll drive you nuts because you're <laughs> Because that both of you are trying to figure out how he did that with the amount of metal that he did. Yeah. Because uh, he because he was like, well, I don't know how he did that. Well, he he flattened out the metal, and he he stepped on it, and he used his he uses uh, his magnetic power no, to that, pull himself it, over. It wasn't about the surface the area. It was about how did he get so much metal in the guy's blood without killing him. They for him to be able to make a a a tray size like a, a serving tray size plate of metal they took he took all of that out of the guy's bloodstream that right. would it definitely was, kill it him was, it was it was real thin because he was using his his mutant powers he, you don't have to have a bunch of metal to do that uh, you if, would when you go back if you, you don't if if i held up a piece of aluminum foil can you stand on that can you balance if your, your powers weight? Are to control metal? Yes. <laughs> no way. He can do anything with metal. No. The point That's was the, point of his power. the point was how did they get so much metal into his bloodstream for him to? Did you see the syringe on? I Mystique did. When but that would kill. Him. That would definitely kill him. That guy should be. It dead would not kill. It would not kill a man who is in a universe. I can't. Where have- I can't talk about X Men anymore. It took away so much of my life. I'm gonna die five years earlier because of going through that franchise. Well, you know, you can bring up a scene, and I can tell you what movie it takes place in. So there. <laughs> okay, literally arguing about a dude has powers to manipulate metal because we know that what realistic is in that universe. Hey, Father Ironheart, I don't appreciate your attitude, sir. You can get out of here so, with that. So, so Magneto could take two small coins. Yeah, or whatever little pieces of metal step on them, and his powers could he could use that to <laughs> levitate him up and move over. Why couldn't he just do it with the, the own iron in his own blood? Because he didn't have that much iron in his blood, bro. <laughs> but he has some. That's what you're saying. He you're saying to, it doesn't matter the to. amount. It just matters that there's some that he could balance on. Yeah, but, you can't yeah, balance iron, on a coin, even if I. The iron that, that that she injected into his butt is not the same iron that you take or earn that you take <laughs> in a pill form. It, but there is iron. There is magnetic, uh, magnetic iron in your bloodstream. So he should be able... Let's see. Yeah, but not he didn't like want to kill what, himself. Not like she injected into his butt. Well, yeah. But either he, way. They, either, he you needed guys, you more, about that which... At first, you didn't know which movie it took place in, if it happened at the end of X-Men 1 or First Class See, or I, whatever. You I don't even think about. you're remembering our confusion correctly. I think you're confused by all that. Because there's so much confusion in the X-Men movies. <laughs> but, <laughs> See, there you go. You can't even keep that straight, and you're yelling at me that I'm getting confused by stuff. This what, guy. I'm getting confused about your confusion about yeah, the X-Men you can't movies. Even, that, you can't even keep what? straight what I was confused about. You're like, was it oh, number it's, one, it's, or it's, I was in the second episode, or was it in Days of Future about, Past? Like, everything you guys fought about. You're like, you're like, uh, what was the one where you? I think it was, I think it was Taylor that had the issue where, where people would have to like, like Professor X puts his hand on his head. It has nothing that like him putting his hand on his head has nothing to do with the powers that he uses. He's yeah. doing that to a, show the audience visual. that he's using his powers. Because if he just stood there and like was making faces at you, he would look dumb. Yeah. When he does this, he's like, "Okay, I'm using my powers." Yeah, but that was that was his point. Was like he hates it in movies when they do that because there would be no reason for him to have to touch his his forehead. But it right. it, it drives him crazy in movies when they do stuff like that just as a visual and representation. And then y'all got confused about which character was Professor X and which movie. I don't it was, think so. it was. What are you talking about? Yeah, it was. <laughs> We've got who Professor X was. Was he the guy with a lot of hair or no hair? Is Professor X the blue one? <laughs> yeah, no, that was the other one. That was the other thing. Oh, is no. That was another point that you guys were yelling at each other about where at the beginning of Days of Future Past when he was walking, you're like, well, was he walking in that movie? I can't remember. Was he? Why was he walking in that movie? I don't no, remember. That was before it we was watched the movie, movie, though. I was saying... No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. It was about... I know he starts off the movie walking, but he, he got paralyzed. 
And it was always confusing to me when I saw it the first time I watched it was that how is he walking? What is the timeline? Because they're jumping around all over the place. I think you should re-listen to those podcasts. No. I would say about I don't 20% of those podcasts are confused. Probably. <laughs> I would say more than that. I'd get and it. I'm watching it and I'm listening to it. I'm like, bro, like I know it. I, I could I could have been in that podcast to help moderate y'all's confusion. Because well, when you were like, well, did that happen at the beginning of, of X-Men United? No, that didn't that happen at the end of the first movie. Oh, okay. Let's move on from there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say. Or sometimes we get confused. <laughs> you guys are young. You're supposed to remember this stuff. No. Well, part Especially of it is just- when the movies are so bad, it, it makes it a lot harder to keep it straight. Yeah. And also. Let's talk about how bad Logan is. What's that? Let's talk about how bad Logan is. Logan is amazing. How dare you, sir? But anyways, I'm trying to wrap up <laughs> Predators. So why don't you tell people wrap about your up. podcast so they can come judge you for getting confused? I don't get confused on the Fire Resistant Podcast. You can catch us on twitch.tv forward slash Fire Resistant Podcast. The end. Don't watch it. I refuse to put my stamp of approval <laughs> on it now. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, we are we are doing a competition. Me and Aaron, we are both trying to lose the most amount of weight by the end of April. Uh, this actually might be coming out on the podcast feed after. <laughs> I'm not sure what the timeline is. But for anyone who's watching live, uh, we are doing a competition. And whoever loses the most amount of weight does not have to pay the punishment of watching a terrible music video for an hour straight. Over on Patreon, we have different tiers you can donate to. Uh, we have to do a Zumba video now. We have to record ourselves doing Zumba because someone donated $20. Um, but for at every $100 mark, we're going to add another hour to the punishment. So currently we're starting off with uh, one hour and then we're going to add an additional hour if we hit $100 and another hour if we hit two, uh, $200, so on and so forth. And it's all to fundraise for our Please don't self. Oh, fire resistant. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was talking about me. I was like, I'm trying to wrap up. Um, <laughs> um, uh, everything is going towards our ministry here in Thailand. So if you would like to help out, we'd appreciate it. If not, totally cool too. Just hanging out with us on Twitch is awesome. But we you will know, the be person, back. The person that donated, right? The person that donated. That's another decision that I re- that uh, that I'm sure that they'll regret making one day. I think so. I mean, she's regretted every decision that it, that comes towards that. But uh, but yeah, so we will be back. Uh, I, me and Aaron should be back next week or two weeks on the podcast feed. I don't know. We got There's weird timelines with everything, so I never know how to say it. Because on Twitch, we should be back next week. On the podcast, mm-hmm. hey, Brian's, thanks for that subscription. Oh, Brian, subscribe. Dang. He said, I want to help out your ministry. He wants to help me from getting confused more and more so we'll add that uh i need to get a tally going but we'll add that money towards the weight loss competition correct that's cool okay with you with me this is your podcast i'm just i'm just hanging out i just want to make sure with the the competition that you're fine bits and subs going towards that tally yeah, any any time that somebody pays for me to to do okay, so here's another thing. Anybody that's in chat that that comes and hangs out with us at the Fire Resistant Podcast, uh, I will bring my Nintendo Switch and I purchased a game called Just Dancing. And if you want to pay for Fat Guy Dances, I will do a song. Oh, uh, and all the money will go toward uh, toward his ministry. So if you tune in and you see a song, you donate like five bucks or whatever and say, I want a fat guy dance. You can pick the song I dance to and then we'll do it. We'll make it happen. Nice. And uh, so, yeah, that, that bumps us up to twenty two and a half dollars So we're edging our way, getting closer and closer to that Woo. additional hour of Aaron having to watch uh, six figures and then something else. Got to figure out what your second video is going to be. You know, I think I, I think when I win, whenever uh more than likely what ended up happening is like I said, someone's going to pay or I'll pay. I'll, I'll make you watch Badgers for two hours. And then, <laughs> you know, the six figures for like, I don't know, 20 minutes or something like that. I, I watched that by choice on during the hundred hour stream. I got so tired. I was 20 hours in and I was like, I got to do something. I got to torture myself. So I did masochist Monday on a Friday and just <laughs> put on bad music videos 
for like right, right. three hours just to keep myself awake. It's like, you know, how like when you're driving, and you're falling asleep, you like bite the side of your mouth to try to wake yourself up. That's what I, that was Nicole. the point I got to. Weird. Wait, I, I, what about, what about the meat? What about the meat song? Did you hear that on our stream the other night? I did. It's crazy. No, that made me <laughs> laugh. So I was thinking hard, but uh, yeah, Maybe so, I should make you listen funny anymore let's let's wrap this up and then we can okay. get to uh the spoiler talk for captain marvel now we can either do so uh follow us on fit or fitter twitter like us on facebook go check out fire resistant on twitch and we will be back at some point um so aaron spoiler yeah. talk uh so fire other <laughs> i i'm shutting down Two hours is apparently the max for my mumble mouth. Okay. Uh, we can either do live or we can shut the stream down and talk spoilers. I would rather shut the stream down so in case somebody accidentally clicks on the stream yeah. and we're talking about something vital to the story. I would, like I said, it's what it's midnight, so we're heading into like our third showing okay. of the movies. So I, yeah. I just don't want. I mean, if it was two weeks from now, then yeah, it would be all about talking yeah. in depth. About Captain Marvel, but not right now. Cool. The movie just came out. All right. So thank you guys for hanging out. We're going to end the stream, continue our talk about Captain Marvel, which should come out uh, today or tomorrow on the podcast feed. But there's spoiler warnings and all that stuff. You'll know if you don't want to hear it to uh, turn it all off. But cool. Thanks for hanging out, guys.